What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and you're here to learn about iOS 9.3. So I'm gonna show you every little detail that's changed, everything from the large to the small, whether or not you should update, all the good and bad things and everything in between. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Now I'm gonna show you some of the larger features and make my way down to these smaller ones. A lot of them I've never shown you on this channel before, so do pay attention. Anyways, the most notable difference in iOS 9.3 has to be night shift. It's f.lux bundled in iOS iOS 9 and I gotta say it's a great thing it'll actually save your eyes a lot of strain at night and help you fall asleep better by not blinding you and blasting you with white bright light now you can set it manually or go on a schedule and choose to have this dim towards the nighttime or daytime and of course you can manually adjust it in here to have a cooler bright white light or a you know, more yellowish right here Definitely an awesome feature. And to make things easy for you, Apple has added a new control center toggle for night shift. It used to be a little bit different, more of a lemon eye shape. Now it's this lunar eclipse sun thing, and it's great to have. You can enable it for now or turn on till tomorrow. iOS 9.3 now has secure notes, so you can keep your notes private by being able to lock them individually in the share settings. So now you have this toggle right here. You can go ahead and enter a password, and there is a separate password for every single note. It's great to be able to have some secure Security on your notes. Now going off of that, the notes settings page actually has some new settings in here as well. You can go ahead and adjust the password and uh, some other settings as well. iOS 9.3 is classroom oriented. It has a new classroom application that allows sharing between users. So unless you go to school, you probably won't even see this. CarPlay has some welcome upgrades as well. If you have a new enough car to support it, you will see some changes. There's a new for you tab in music. There's a few new interface changes in the Apple music music application as well as near you in the maps application. Great news for early adopters of iOS betas, iOS 9.3 and beyond now supports configuration profiles. Basically, instead of waiting for the public beta to install the uh, over the air updates, you can actually get them from Apple developer portal right now. That is of course, if you are an Apple developer and pay $100 per month. So you can easily get them here, download an update to developer previews here. The infamous 1970 bug has been fixed. Now, if you actually try and go back back to 1970, you will no longer be able to go back that far. It only goes far as uh, 2001, January 1st. It will not let you go any further. The Safari crash bug has also been fixed, so you are no longer able to load that website. iOS 9.3 brings back the popularity meter to the music application in the iTunes store. So now you can see which songs deserve the most attention from the fans. In fact, it's now instead of a meter, just a star to let you know that it's the more popular one out of the album. The Wi-Fi Assist feature in cellular will now show you the amount of data it's been using over cellular when you're actually using this feature. So it'll look just like that underneath the Wi-Fi Assist tab. In the watch application on your iPhone, you'll now get a little preview of the actual face of your Apple Watch. Not only that, you can now pair more than one Apple Watch. So you'll have a little different interface when you have two different Apple Watches paired to your device. There are tons of new 3D touch toggles, including the main one on settings, where you have a new Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and battery toggle. Next on health, weather, the iTunes and App Stores have two new options to uh, update all and view purchase. I believe the stocks application and the compass application. So uh, looking just like that. Additionally, some of the actual logos have been changed just a little bit. See the redeem tab is a little bit bolder on 9.3. When entering the actual app switch or using the 3D touch feature on compatible devices, you'll feel a vibration upon entering it. Previously, it was only felt upon popping into it, but now you feel two vibrations, peaking and popping into it. In the health app, there's a new health activity section, and in 9.3, it now displays the actual data in bar charts like this instead of this little interface right here. So uh, interesting, small little changes. The app store now supports 3D touch, peak and pop features. Features. So you can easily peek and pop into applications without needing to go in and load them. This one I can't show you, but the activity app inside of the Apple Watch related app now has a separate tab for workouts. Now, if you guys are at all familiar with the Apple configurator, uh, if you're a developer, you can hide system apps in uh, iOS 9.3 using that feature. It's not easy, it's not user friendly, but it can be done. iOS 9.3 has a cool new feature that applies to live photos and regular photos 
you can easily duplicate the photo inside of the share settings. So using this option right here, you can either duplicate or there's a new option, make a live photo, just a still photo. In the privacy settings, there is a new media library tab right here for uh, your media, Apple Music. Now, what does this new tab mean? Media library actually means that it'll give developers access to your iCloud music library. So third-party applications will be able to add music to your iCloud library using this new feature. Awesome. iBooks now supports iCloud, so you can sync your PDFs and books between all of your devices and have them accessible always. The news application has received some updates. It's now more optimized. The algorithms are better to better suit your news and needs. And there are now options when you go ahead and swipe to the left and to the right. So uh, awesome. Get to interact with your news more. Siri has learned three new languages, Finnish, Hebrew, and Malay, all available in these settings, of course. In the wallet application, you now have a quick shortcut right here to the application that belongs to the card or whatever it is you're looking at. So you can go ahead and click on it and be taken to that app. It's actually quite unbelievable how much faster Safari has gotten. Apple's removed a 350 millisecond delay between clicking the button and having it registered. So as a quick little test for input, let's go ahead and load one of these and uh, one, two, three. Boom. As you can see, there is an apparent difference. And I've actually tested many websites on uh, 9.3 loads them every single time, especially if there's a choice like on Google, the input delay is gone. Now, unfortunately, the ability to navigate in iOS 9.3 was removed in beta four. You can still open apps. Uh, you just can't do a lot of the things you could before. And it was really annoying. But Apple is restoring functionality for the Apple Pencil in 9.3. So if you're watching this when it's out, this obviously won't apply. Apple's actually added a lot of functionality for the smart keyboard cover for the iPad Pro. You can now use the right and left buttons for navigation in the actual iBooks app, which is really, really handy if you're reading on a desktop. And same goes for news as well. Let's say, uh, let's get into an article right here. You can use the keys as navigation, scroll down, flip, from a news source to news source, really cool stuff. Now let's say you're in an application. You can actually use Command H on that same keyboard to go ahead and go back to the home screen. Really handy little feature. This is becoming more and more like a little netbook. And lastly, just wanted to say some people reporting the keyboard for a split view actually got smaller and that's not the case. I took a picture before and after they're exactly the same size, so no difference there. But anyways, guys, there you go. iOS 9.3 fully reviewed. That is every feature included in this new version. Please do leave me one below if I did forget any. I was pretty thorough with my research and I think I got all of them. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. It's definitely a firmware worth upgrading to. There really is no reason not to update unless you're holding out for a jailbreak, but we'll find out about that later. So have a great day, guys. Enjoy this update when it drops. Peace.